So are you thinking about selling a house that's in poor condition, but you still want to make sure you're going to get top dollar? Well, today I'm going to talk to you about three things that you really need to be careful of when you're selling a house that's in poor condition, if you still want to get top dollar. Oh my gosh, you guys, there are some really unethical people out here that will take advantage of you if you aren't careful and give you bad advice. So I'm here to tell you three things to look out for. When you're selling a house that's in poor condition but still wanna to get top dollar, listen to me today. That's what I'm talking about. Hi again, it's Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in Silicon Valley, specialized in selling homes, especially if they're in trust and probate or downsizing seniors or downsizing people that just want a smaller house. So what I do all day long pretty much is think about how to help my clients make money when they're selling their house, okay? That's my specialty. And in my little niche, oftentimes the house is really in poor condition. So when you're asking the question, how do I sell a house that's in poor condition? You have found the expert, okay? I know I've got the best advice for you on this. So number one, huge red flag, huge no-no, don't do this, neon signs flashing. Do not sell your house to one of those companies. It's uh, we buy ugly homes, we buy pay cash for a house in any condition. And the reason I'm telling you that, I'm not saying you can't sell to them, but don't just see one sign or one ad and think, oh gosh, this will make my life easy. This house is in such disarray. I just want cash and to make it simple. You're gonna leave so much money on the table. By just calling that one investor, because that's all they are, it's some kind of investor group or an investor realtor or investor person that just wants a deal, wants to get a house off market and to them, a house that is dated with you know 20 years versus a house that's dated by 60 years it's the same cost to fix up to them they aren't scared away by seeing mold seeing you know floors ripped up bathrooms not even working it doesn't make a difference to them buyers on the other hand will be like oh my gosh what do we do here such a weird so these people that really advertise they're good at online you'll see signs around town uh, they really want to take advantage of you in the sense that they will make it really easy. They will say you can leave anything in the yard, anything in the house, don't worry about it. And they'll give you a cash offer. Okay, that might be what you want and a quick close and not to lift a finger. But the problem is every investor has different criteria of what is important to them. And so the guy with the sign says, we buy ugly houses versus the guy that says, we pay cash for houses that need work. One person might be willing to pay 500,000 for a house. And this guy might be willing to pay 550,000. Uh, I take the one that's 550,000. So at least interview and meet with a few people, a bare minimum of three. If you're doing this on your own, find at least three investors and get their their value don't leave money on the table number two don't talk to one realtor and them say to you oh my gosh this is so much work buyers are going to be scared away you know what i've got an investor it'll make it so much easier for you i have a great relation with him oh he's such a good guy or she's such a great gal they're trustworthy, they have integrity, they'll give you the best price and I promise it'll be easy. They'll pay cash, sure. You can leave you know, the cars in the yard, leave everything in the house, get what you want and just leave and they'll take care of everything. We don't have to do inspections. You don't have to, I don't have to market. We don't have to you know, try and do open houses. I mean, this will be so much easier. Okay, the problem with that people is that in, that realtor has their own interests at heart because if they have one investor that they like and they bring that one investor that one investor might even pay them extra than what you're paying them in commission plus when that investor fixes up your house and goes to sell it that realtor gets the second sale so they sell it from you to that person and then from the investor to another buyer so for them that's a two for one deal they, they, get, and they might not have your best interest at heart really have to be careful of some realtors out there. There are a lot that don't have integrity and they will tell you things that works in their benefit. I'm not saying that they won't get you an easy deal and a cash deal, which is maybe what is really important to you. But 
I don't know, to me, $50,000, $100,000 is a big deal. And a lot, a lot of times you're leaving that, if not more, on the table if your realtor just tells you to go with their one investor. Don't do it. What I do in situations like this, because I have had a handful of times when my sellers don't want to put it on the market. They're like, Annie, I just, I don't know. I just, I want it to go to an investor. I don't want headaches. I don't want questions. We're selling it as is. I don't want to remove the cars. Come on, just sell it to an investor. Well, what would I'll do is do open house for all my investors. So. I have a pretty big database of investors and I'll let them come and then they'll bid it up. So I know I still got my seller the best and highest offer and it was still cash. They didn't have to do anything and it was simple and we can still get it done within two weeks. No problem. If you want to still go ahead with selling it off market, make sure you do have your agent do an open house for investors. Okay. Nothing wrong with you know, them representing one, one of those investors, but let's just make sure they show it to at least 10 investors. Okay, third final red flag thing to, to look out for is nosy neighbors, okay? I've seen this a couple of times where neighbors will come in and give advice. Oh my gosh, you can't even call a realtor until you, you know, fix a little bit of this place up. Oh, you need to change out the carpet. Maybe they have their own sort of agenda being a neighbor. They, they could have good intentions, but they might say, you need to fix up the landscaping. Oh, you gosh, you really need to change out the windows. You know, and they have no idea what is important or not important. So that's when you need professional advice. Get at least two different realtors to come in and give you opinions. Some might say, oh yeah, you need to do everything. Some might get it and say, what are your goals? If your goals is, are just to sell it as is and get a high cash offer, even if it goes on the market, some regular buyers are thrilled to get a house that needs a ton of work. Maybe they have a family member in construction, so they're like, this is great. It's a blank slate. We're happy to take on all the problems of this you know, deferred maintenance house. Sometimes it is better to, to do nothing. Uh, so don't listen to, you know, nosy Nancy neighbor that's just trying to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. Get professional opinion. Um, where this, where you start the remodeling and where you end it, or if they're just like, oh no, don't do anything. I've got one investor. Don't listen to that. So get, get a couple, at least two realtors to, you know, I love this kind of sale. It's really my favorite because everyone is different. And it's not because I say it's different. It's because the seller is different. Some sellers are all in. Annie, let's do everything. Let's fix this up. So yeah, I might have to wait a couple months to put it on the market, but I might get a couple hundred thousand more. I'm all in. And sometimes my sellers are like, Annie, I'm done. I'm tired. I've, I've gone through a lengthy process just getting to this point. I just want to sell it as is but how do we still get the most money for this house that's in poor condition? So, you know, always reach out. I really love talking about all this. Reach out with any questions. Comment below if there's other questions you have or other topics you want me to do. And until next time, have a good one.